Hello there and welcome to Maths A Level Practice Paper A and here we're on the final question, question 13. Uh, it's a functions question. So uh, solve the equation q of x, so that's this one here, write your answer in the form of that. Okay, so x squared minus 10x minus 20 and this thing needs to equal 0, so equals 0. Okay, so do it this whichever way you want. It doesn't look like it factorizes, uh, otherwise it wouldn't be in this complicated form. So I'm going to complete the square. So I need to then take away 25 and then take away the 20 from above. So that will equal 0. So it's going to be x minus 5 squared. Add the 45 over to the other side. Uh, square root both sides, remembering you've got a positive and a negative. So positive negative root 45. And then uh, add the 5 to both sides to be 5 plus or minus root 45. Okay, that doesn't look like what we want our answer in. We need a 3 at the front. Yes. Okay, so if we pull out a 9 out of this, we're going to get 5 plus or minus 3 at root. Uh, 9 times 5 is 45, so 3 root 5. So here, effectively, A is representing the number 5 and B is representing the number 5. Okay, so part B is now to sketch the graphs of y equals p of x and y equals q of x. Sketching graphs, if it's a sketching graphs question, make sure you always give yourself lots of space and make sure everything as far as possible is to scale. So y-axis, x-axis. Um, and the first thing we need to do is label all the points of intersection of our graphs. Okay, let's look at the first one. So it's going to be a straight line because there's no squared in it. It's going to be negative gradient because it's negative a half. And it's going to start at 3. Okay, so little marker at 3. Um, and it's going to have a negative gradient just like that. Um, so when does the y coordinate equal 0? Well, I think 6 is probably going to be best there. So if you see it here, a half of 6 is 3. 3 take away 3 gives you 0. Or you could think of it, if you're going down by, uh, across by 1 and down a half each time, then you're getting it to 6. Okay, the next part is the x squared minus 10x minus 20 part. So it's going to be a quadratic graph like this. Um, what would be quite useful to have is these numerical values um, just as decimals because it's a bit hard to see where I'm going to put these on my axes, whether the 5 minus 3 root 5 is going to be positive or negative, it's going to be difficult to tell. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work these out on the calculator real quick, minus 1.708 is, uh, is the first one with a negative. Um, and the second one is going to be 11.708. <clears throat> okay. So uh, one marker at minus 1.7, another marker at uh, 11.708. Um, it's going to cross the y-axis at minus 20. So minus 20 down here. And let's try and then fit in a quadratic that's as symmetrical as we possibly can make it, just like that. So minus 1.708 is that uh, that coordinate there. Let's make sure we write all of these as coordinates, just in case. Uh, be minus 1.780, and this one over here is going to be um, 11.708. 0 as a coordinate. Okay, great, so that's part B done. Let's move on now to part C. Use an algebraic method to find the coordinates of any points of axis intersections um, of P, y equals px and y equals qx, right? So if we want these two to have intersection points, what we do is we set the equations equal to each other. So x squared minus 10x minus 20. So let's, uh, let's move everything onto one side and make a quadratic. Um, so we get x squared. We'll add half of x. So that'll be, that'll be minus 20 over 2. Add another half. You get minus 17 over 2x. And to take away 3, you get minus 23. Um, let's make all these whole numbers because it might be a little bit easier. 2x squared minus 19x minus 46. 
Right, okay. Um, you might be able to um, factorise this into two brackets. Let's use the calculator to help me do the work here. So what I've done is I've hit the menu button, I've scrolled down to option A, I'll select polynomials and I'll select a degree of 2. I'll type in my polynomial 2 minus 19 minus 46 and press enter and I get x is 23 over 2. That's a nice good number and the next one is going to be x equals minus 2. So let's just work our way back up a little bit and show that we've got some workings here. So if x is minus 2 as a solution, then x plus 2 must be in the bracket there. And for this one here, it must be 2x minus 23. Let's just check that makes sense. Minus 23, add the 4. Yeah, you get minus 19. Great. OK, that was a bit sneaky, wasn't it? Right, part D is to now write down the set of coordinates for which the q of x graph is on top of the p of x graph. So let's go back to um, our graph, and it roughly looked um, something like this. Um, this coordinate here is going to be the 23 over 2 coordinate, and this coordinate here is going to be the minus 2 coordinate. So what we want is for the q of x graph, which is the quadratic one, to be um, higher than or greater than the p of x graph. So this is the quadratic one here. So we want all of this room here where the q of x graph is on top. In the middle bit here, the p of x graph is on top of the um, q of x graph. So we don't want that bit, but we also want this part of the graph here. So effectively this part here. So what we want is for the x coordinates to be less than minus 2 or for them to be uh, greater than 23 over 2. But it says write this in set notation. So we're going to have to use those awkward squiggly brackets to help write this answer. So what this is going to be is it's going to be squiggly bracket x such that x exists in the real numbers. Um, and it's going to be x is less than minus 2, end squiggly brackets, and it's an or, so the symbol for that is a u shape, a union shape, um, and it's the same thing, x, such that x exists in the real set of numbers, and it is greater than 23 over 2. Okay, great, so that's our final answer for question 13, paper complete.